joined right now uh, to talk a little bit more about the impact of COVID on the games by Dr. Scott Gottlieb, former FDA commissioner, and CNBC contributor. He also serves on the boards of Pfizer and Illumina. Uh, good morning to you, uh, doctor. We we're watching the Olympics uh, open up. Um, and I think there's questions, of course, and concerns about what this means, not just for the games, but but I think in a more broader context around what happens post games, especially as we're seeing uh, the Delta variant on the increase. Right. Well, look, I think it's certainly possible to use testing and the procedures they have in place to keep the game safe. Um, they're going to turn over cases. We're seeing them do that. But that's an indication of the system working, not failing. Hopefully they're identifying the cases before they prevent, before they become outbreaks inside the Olympic Village. They can create a bubble around these events, certainly not on par with what the NBA did. They're not going to be able to deploy testing in that way, um, but achieve a measure of safety around these events. I think it's unfortunate to see only about 80 percent of the U.S. athletes vaccinated, quite frankly, because we had an opportunity to set an example for the world around vaccination. Certainly our, our athletes had more access to vaccine than many other athletes around the world. And we, that fact that we couldn't achieve a higher rate of vaccination to not only protect our athletes, protect people around the venues, but also set an example, I think, is, is unfortunate. But I think these games can come off, come off safely. I know that they're stepping up the amount of testing they're doing. Uh, and they can use testing and procedures in terms of how they move the athletes around to try to control the risk of outbreaks in that setting. Can you uh, weigh in on what we're hearing from the NFL overnight um, about their plans effectively to try to incentivize or de-incentivize people who don't take the vaccine and to get the entire uh, teams, the clubs, to, to all be vaccinated. Effectively, they're saying, look, if you're not vaccinated and something happens and you have to forfeit, it's going to cost you and it's going to cost you money. Yeah, well, it certainly looks like a way to mandate vaccination without mandating vaccination. I think as we head into the, into the fall and the winter, hopefully the vaccines achieve full approval. I think you're going to see more businesses... Um, do this. I think you're going to see more mandates get put in place. Certainly in a healthcare setting, you're starting to see that become more commonplace. Business wants to restart. People want to restart activities. And to the extent that the vaccines are going to provide an added measure to be able to do that safely and protect venues where you're bringing people together, I think you're going to see um, more sports teams, right. more business um, venues start to mandate vaccination. Um, Dr. you're of course, on the board of Pfizer. Um, one of the, uh, the, the, the original creators of this, this vaccine. Uh, study in Israel effectively suggests uh, that they drop in uh, vaccine protection. And uh, there seems to be a major debate uh, about that. Where do you stand? Well, look, it, it's consistent with what we've been seeing um, over a prolonged period of time right now, which there seems to be a decline in efficacy, particularly around an older population vaccinated a while ago. And that's, that's what's... Um, renewed this debate around providing boosters, particularly to the, to the frail elderly people in nursing homes, for example. And there has been some reported data that doesn't look that discouraging. It shows pretty good vaccine effectiveness overall against symptomatic disease, but a decline in effectiveness against any infection. But then there's been some leaks on top of that, some unsubstantiated leaks right now from the Israeli data set showing declining effectiveness against severe disease in the cohort that was vaccinated in January. So what the reports say... Um, and these are unconfirmed reports, is that there's about 80 percent effectiveness against uh, symptomatic and severe disease in the cohort that was vaccinated in January. But when you age stratify it, you see a sharper decline among an older population. So remember, in Israel, they vaccinated in January their health care workers and their frail elderly. And so in the older population, you see a more pronounced decline. That wouldn't be that inconsistent with some of the other data sets that we've seen, as well as how we understand immunity, that in an older population um, with a weaker immune system, you might not have the same durability of response. Remember, when we started talking about these vaccines, initially we talked about the possibility there may need to be boosters provided at around this point in time. We talked about the possibility that this may become an annual um, injection, and there may be a cohort of the population that does, in fact, need to be boosted. I think we ought to be looking more closely at this in the U.S., particularly around the nursing homes, because remember, we vaccinated the residents, the 1.34 million residents of U.S. nursing homes back in December. So they are now entering into the 2021-2022 the COVID season, this Delta wave, with a vaccine now that's quite old. And so we should be looking very seriously about what the durability of protection is in that population and whether or not they need uh, a booster. We're, we're a little bit behind the ball on that, I think, here in the U.S. And I think at least directionally, this data is probably correct, whether or not the magnitude or the effect that the Israelis are reporting is, in fact, what's happening here in the U.S. and other countries. It's unclear. Hey, 
Hey, Scott, I, I saw the, the forecast from the CDC yesterday that said as of the week of August 14th, they anticipate for that, for that week we'll have anywhere from 92,000 cases of COVID to 803 cases of COVID. That makes me feel like the CDC doesn't have any idea where we're headed or, or what's happening here. Have we lost track of this? I think they're having a very hard time modeling this, and they don't know where we are in, the, um, in this wave of infection. And I think it also reflects the fact that we're having a difficult time uh, doing ascertainment, figuring out how much infection, in fact, is underway. And I think we're vastly undermeasuring how much infection is already underway in the U.S. And where we are in this, in this epidemic wave, I think we're probably further into it than we're measuring right now. I think they're also having a hard time measuring what the uh, components of immunity are and how durable the immunity is. And that's why you're seeing a very wide variance right. in, in the estimates. And anywhere from, you know, the, the going into the final week of August right. 14th, 14th, they're measuring anywhere from 10,000 infections a day to 100,000 infections a day. That's a pretty wide range. Doctor, um, I, I want to go back, though, to this idea of the booster shot. Uh, why do you think the CDC thus far has been as resistant as it appears that they are uh, to the suggestion that a booster could even be necessary. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting even the sort of ideas uh, promulgated that, that Pfizer is pushing this because they, they, they want to uh, do this for profit as opposed to appears what you're saying and maybe some of these studies are saying that, that they actually may be needed. Well, look, if, if in fact we require boosters in the U.S., it would be among an older population by and large. Anyone who's vaccinated now wouldn't need a booster. Anyone who's vaccinated during the summer who's younger, healthier, wouldn't need a booster going into the fall. So we're probably talking about 30 or 40 million um, injections out of 4 billion vaccines that are going to be delivered by Pfizer next year. So, you know, this is not a big component of what Pfizer is going to be delivering to the world. So I, I, I sort of reject the notion that this is somehow you know, an effort to try to get more vaccine out there. Um, I think, you know, we have a legitimate public health concerns. We don't want to see people who are vulnerable put at risk unnecessarily. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.